the distribute 3D line eye expression allows a bunch of 3D layers, as I have here, to be placed in 3D space along some straight line. And you can also modify it using some advanced things like, for example, a wiggle here to get them slightly off from their position on this line. So I have here a set of pictures, you can also use video clips or whatever, of course, and they have a quite big size here, they are even larger than my composition and they are all placed at this position here. I also already renamed the first one first and the last one last. And this is because the eye expression must know which is the first and which is the last layer. And then the next thing it needs to know is where should the line start in 3D space and where should it end. Yeah. And so we can, for example, say that it should start um, at here a bit right of my screen, say, say here, um, 1000, and it should end centered, 0, 0, but way uh, in that depth be behind the screen, yeah? Let's say uh, 10,000 uh, backwards. And if we apply this to all these layers here, they are automatically aligned in such a fashion. Yeah, you can see now the first one is here and the other ones are all behind. You, you cannot see much here. Maybe we should move the first one further to the side. So say the starting point is not at 1000 but at 2000 and also we can move them maybe a bit down or maybe also not. Just here for demonstration purposes this is okay. Apply. So now you can see it better as yeah, they are nicely aligned here in uh, 3D space. Usually if you want to animate these points, the best thing you can do is create two null objects, layer new null object. I select this and sel say control D to duplicate it and say here starting point and here end ending point like this and make sure these are 3D layers yeah, because what we have here are really 3D positions and we reveal their positions and link this to the start and this one here to the end. And now we have an eye expression that makes a line from this point to this point and we select all these layers here and reapply the eye expression and now, yeah, they are again back here because my null layers are located here. And if we now move them in 3D space, yeah, for example, we move the starting point here to the right, you see all the other layers automatically follow this. So let's here move a bit behind in that space. Let's say minus 500. And let's move here, or sorry, other direction, 500. And here I want to go, uh, let's say, 4,000 backwards. Yeah, now you can see you have nicely arranged them here in space. And maybe we can go here a bit to the left, zero. Yeah, now the endpoint moved back over here. Okay, if you want to fly along these, of course, we should make them even much more distant. Let's say uh, 12,000, which is three times as much. Yeah. And then we could also go here, minus 500. You can play with those numbers to, to place them wherever you like. Yeah, Maybe we should go here with the beginning a bit to the right, like this. So this looks already quite nice. And now assume we want with the camera to travel along this. Yeah, For this, you would either any move both the starting and the ending point, or what is easier in this case, to animate a camera along these elements here. And one thing that comes in very handy is that you can see we have here only 20 layers. And also in the demo clip you've got, se you've seen at the beginning, there were not more than this. And the idea is we can reuse these uh, elements here from the beginning once they disappeared out of the camera, like here's this first one, and place them at the end. And this can be done with this layer offset thing here. Yeah? So if I have a layer offset of one, what will happen is that I select here these elements and hit apply. The first one will disappear and will be re reinsert at the end. So here is a new one. Here is the first layer now. Yeah. So last layer, this one. First layer. Look here at the marking. 
yeah, even behind because we pushed the first layer behind it. And if you say here, for example, three, the first three layers, let's just reapply it. The first three layers are uh, are moved to the back. Yeah, very nice. Okay, and if you now link this here to some slider and animate it over time, you can continuously move uh, elements from the top to the end and can have a camera move along these layers and it always finds new layers at the end, namely the ones that it has seen before. Yeah, a great way to fake more layers than you actually have to, to make everything look big here. Okay, another thing I want to show, so for animating it again, link this using this symbol here to some slider control as I've shown you in many other um, examples here in other quick tips. Okay, then we have in addition this wiggle. Let's say we do not want this line to look that regular. Yeah? Then we can simply add a wiggle and say for example they should be displaced up to 300 uh, pixels. If you do this and reapply it, you will see they are now placed a little bit less regular. Yeah, they are still all on the line but all shifted a bit. Yeah? And um, if you want, uh, so currently this is completely static, so if you go here in time, you see it's always the same. If you want them to move over time a bit, you can use this frequency here. Yeah, We can, for example, say 1 to say there's one random move here per uh, second. So the higher the you choose this number here, the faster will this random movement be. Yeah? So now you can see all of them are moving uh, along in space. And of course you can again use the same trick of animating the amplitude here by linking it to some slider to make the elements move into their position here in the line. Yeah? I've also shown this trick in many of the other quick tips, so if you watch the other quick tips you will see examples where I do this animating of the amplitude. To keep everything uh, quick here I skip this part here and um, actually also how I did it in the preview you've seen is in this case I did not use here this uh, wiggle stuff to, to animate in. So uh, I just removed this here. Okay, it complains that this empty string is not a valid float number. So I delete it and set it back to zero like this. Okay, and uh, apply. So now we have no wiggling at all anymore. But I actually did uh, in the animation to start, which also looks quite interesting, is to keyframe here the start and end point. Yeah, they can also, of course, be keyframed as you want. So in this case, I have the starting point uh, here quite close. Here, yeah. Uh, still remember, don't be irritated. We have here this layer offset. Maybe let's set this back to zero also, and apply everything. And now we have the start again here, and now what I can, for example, do is say, okay, the start point should not be right from the start here at the beginning, but this should be only after 25 frames or so. So we set here a keyframe and say at the very beginning, it should rather have the position of the end point. So we just select this one and paste it here, like this. And now you have such, such a nice animating in effect here, yeah, where the starting point of your line travels and it pulls out basically all the pictures uh, on this line. Yeah, So the line grows since the starting point moves away from the end point. Also a very nice effect that you can easily create here with this um, line expression. Okay, um, what else to show? You, you can have a wiggle on the line. This means uh, you should not wiggle away from the line but on the line just back and forth. Yeah, this is by enabling this here. This changes the meaning of this wiggling here. Uh, maybe also let's show this quickly. So we say here amplitude of 10,000 to make it very visible. And um, apply it again to all of those. And look at the RAM preview.
and now you can see they move back and forth but they stay on the line so the wiggle all the wiggling happens just on the line yeah so you can also add some noise like this okay layer offset is uh, uh, explained then you also have here this keyframe value offset this means once you enable this the usual keyframe value of your position is added to the position on the line this means you have an additional option to keyframe elements i explain this in more detail for example in the distribute 2d grid i expression yeah so if you want to know how this is working look at this one okay so that's it for for this i expression i hope you also watch the other quick tips and yeah that this is helpful